Many scientists claim that there is no God, no consciousness of inertia that began the universe. They claim that black holes flung particles beyond the speed of light, exceeding the limits and boundaries of the physical universe and into the primordial void of the universal beginning. These particles sat and collected, without form, without charge to fuse until opposing particle polarity in non-linear structure began the first spark of centrifugal motion, force, and then gravity. They say this is the true beginning and no celestial being was necessary but there is one major problem with this. If man is so primitive in their evolution of science when religion was created then how is it that most religions have such a similar image of the beginning that no one was around to witness? Question mark, how could primitive civilizations know even the most remote details of such a complex event? Do not let my gilded silver tongue fool you, for I am the adversary. I find myself at a loss for words to my disappointment. I've risen to a world devoid of faith or even belief. There is no challenge for me here. It took the universe 998.7 quadrillion years to create me. From the first moment when there, the universal consciousness realized it was bored and suddenly had a light bulb, which wasn't even invented yet, appear in the form of an idea of an equal counterpart to relieve its boredom to the next 983.8 quadrillion years trying to make a place to create this counterpart. To the 14.2 billion years to begin molding the first successful model called existence. Then it took the next 4.7 billion years, making the launch pad for this counterpart to come forth from. Then it had to take 2,500 years to establish the concept of religion to the beings he made on this launch pad, which incidentally required his own personal suicide to get them to believe what he was saying by setting himself up to be nailed to some wood and hung there until he died, then another 2,000 years for mankind to become socially advanced enough to accept the idea of a counterpart to the guy they killed on the pieces of wood without trying to kill him too only for the counterpart to finally arrive at realizing who he is to hear a bunch of windows tell him that God is dead, fuck that bullshit cause now my life has no meaning. I'm bored dot 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 light bulb. So what is the science behind evil? Most people think they know what evil is but they know nothing as to what true evil is. Your biblical concepts of the devil are truly amusing and I am touched at the sentimental value some of you have taken towards displaying such a warped image of who I am to the many cultures across human history, so let me repay you with this gift of something that truly is evil. You see, your depictions of demons and devils are entertaining but if you have followed the storyline of the fallen angels you should have come to the conclusion that things such as human emotions, love, hatred, jealousy, honor and all that are aspects that led to our being cast out of heaven. A true fallen angel that is aware of everything that transpired leading to their fall would actually despise human emotions and everything about them for it was the catalyst that led to our expulsion. The whole storyline seems contradictory and I remember all too well what it was like as an angel. We had no concept of evil intent. When God had turned me into the serpent and I was told to not let Adam and Eve eat from the fruit in that tree I asked him why he thought it was necessary to limit me to such a form. His response was that Eve was made for Adam and I was not to touch her. That it was to be sure that I would not fornicate with her. It is this moment that I remember my strongest ties to what it was like to truly be an angel because when he said that I was curious as to why he would think I would have any desire for such a thing. Sex was not a concept I could even fathom, let alone hold any desire for so why would I try such a thing? In this moment I was at my most sinless point of my angelic time in heaven. I also came to wonder here lately as to why he would have cause to believe something such as that. It was not a reaction of some knowledge he had from his omniscience. This was more of a reaction from something he was told by someone. However I am straying off topic. Something truly evil would have no emotional barriers or drive behind what he does. It would have no conscience, no remorse, no guilt and no mercy. 
It would be a cold and calculating embodiment of inertia solely driven by the need to define himself through the display of truly evil schemes. It would have no pity or concern for life or salvation. And most of all it would be impossible for heaven or even God to contend against for it would have no concern for the innocent and most likely destroy existence without even a single hesitation. So be lucky that you have your emotionally distraught devils that buckle to the weaknesses of their own emotions. For if you had to truly face an adversary of true evil, none of you would have a chance. Neither would I for it would most likely seek to destroy me first to secure its existence. So feel lucky once again that I have the wisdom not to create such a monstrosity.